blessed be the name of the Lord. From the book of Malachi 3, 6. Malachi 3, 6. <clears throat> For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Reading it again. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Savior, we're blessed to be here today. We're thankful, Lord God, for your kindness toward us. Where you could have discarded us, yet you have kept us. Lord, where you have turned your back on us, but no, you face us every day and you call unto us. Reach and touch all your children today. In fact, I pray for those that are not saved yet, Lord God, that you would begin to bring them like never before into the house of God, that they might feel after you that happily they might be saved. And everyone said amen. You may be seated. The verse of scripture that we are using from the book of Malachi <clears throat> was the only one that I could, I felt would speak to me today as I was at home. It spoke to me. I had so many other things. You know, with, with what's happening in the world right now overnight and the change that is quickly coming upon us, I've been conflicted as to what to bring to you. I've preached uh, so many times on prophetic issues. I believe today we're going to maybe mix a little bit of it. I don't know, but uh, this is the verse that I have. This is my daily bread for today. Uh, before I had, I haven't eaten today, so before my toast and everything else that I had today, chorizo and eggs and everything, I have had <laughs> the word of God. And I'm thankful for that. Amen. For there are times when I desire the word of God more than my necessary food. And every one of us should know that we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Therefore, if that is true, everyone should have a Bible. Everyone should own a Bible. Everyone should have access to the Word of God, whether it's for cell phone or whatever. And uh, you should eat it every day, just as you do your necessary food. Otherwise, if we have no importance to God's Word and we don't have it in its proper place, you're going to starve to death spiritually. Yes. Amen. I don't see anybody here starving to death physically. So <laughs> what we need, need to do is make sure that we are, that we are hefty, amen, in spiritual things. Right. Praise the Lord, amen. It's all right, it's all right, this word of God is for us. For I am the Lord, he states, and he makes this proclamation, I change not. Therefore, we're, every time we come to the house of the Lord, as we did today, we can sing songs of victory. We can sing songs of encouragement. Because the Lord, there is no, in him there is no darkness, neither is there any shadow of turning. The Lord, all the promises of God are yes and amen. We should come to the house of the Lord, not with a fallen countenance, but we should come to the house of the Lord with our eyes lifted up, amen, ready to rejoice in him who is our soon coming king. Yes, he's our soon coming king. He changes not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. So this was initially spoken in, in inspiration to the nation of Israel. And he, as, he, as, as he called them, didn't call them by the name of Israel, he called them by his, his original name, Jacob. Jacob became known as Israel. The reason he called them Jacob is because he, he's talking to them in a fallen state. He's talking to them as a people that do not listen to him. 
If they were victorious in this sentence, he would be called them, therefore ye sons of Israel. But here he calls them as double-minded, stiff-necked. He's talking to them as a people, amen, that have been known to fail. I don't know about you, but have you ever failed God? Amen. So, but this as a nation, they are supposed to bless, they are supposed to be a blessing to the world as a nation simply through ordinances and things of ceremony. But they couldn't do that. They couldn't put their heart into it. One thing that the Lord desires from us is that we put our heart into it because we should love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our might. So you ought to tell the Lord, Lord, help me to catch myself when I'm going through the motions. Help me to catch myself when I'm not being sincere. Help me, oh God, catch and catch me, oh God, when I'm not being true, amen, to what I'm supposed to be. Lord, when I'm being hypocritical, help me. Help me, oh God, and search my heart and help me know when I am not where I should be with you. I mean, it takes a courageous person, amen, to face up to the Word of God. Because the Word of God tells us we are sinners. If you're a drunkard, they'll tell you you're a sinner. You know, if you're fornicated, they'll tell you you're a sinner. But not many people can take that at face value and receive it. They'd rather rebel against the Word of God, and they'd rather ignore it. But we, oh God, Aramosata, we, we who have decided to follow Jesus, we who have decided that, Lord, I want to follow you all the way. You are the way, the truth, and the light. You are the door. You have, you have everlasting life in you. And therefore, who else can I possibly follow? A lot of people are just following pastors. They're not following Jesus. All right? They're not following Jesus. A lot, of, a lot are following religion. They're not following Jesus. A lot of them are following the lust of their own flesh. They're not following Jesus. And they can say they love everybody, but not in the right way that the Lord wants them to love them. Amen. This is the way, amen, that we must exist, knowing that we must be true to the Lord uh, and not be, amen, and not be a Jacob, but we must be an Israel to the Lord. We must be an Israel. When he changed his name, when he changed his name to Israel, it meant God's champion. So when you were a loser or maybe uh, double-minded uh, and you didn't want to commit totally and you didn't want to submit to what God's word says, then you fall in the category of a Jacob. Now Jacob was still related, no doubt. You're not, you're not a castaway, but there's faults and failures in the life. They were still his people. They were, he still loved them, but he called them so they would get a hint. Oh, Jacob, that, this is why I'm faithful. He said, I am the one who loves you. I change not, therefore you are not destroyed. So he didn't destroy him. He didn't destroy Jacob uh, uh, in, in that sense, but he kept them. He said, therefore you are not consumed. You see, Israel has been through a lot. And they are, they are a, a, an example to us. And sometimes we've gone through a lot, and a lot, sometimes it's of our own making, and sometimes God allows us to be tested so, to purify us. Yes. And so as Jacob, we are, we are, we are tested many times. Or, or, as Jacob, we go of our own fault. We go through stuff, and it takes a lifetime to recover. But the Lord doesn't get rid of us. He still loves us. Right. Amen. He still cares for us. You come to church, and people encourage you, keep coming to church. Keep coming to church. But you might not feel like coming to church, but we tell you, keep coming to church. One of these times, you're going to get something that's going to take you to another level. This is why, we, this is why the church of God, amen, the, those that are like Israel, rally around you, and we want to leave no one behind. No person, no saint left behind. So we have an identity that the Lord sees us through, and we must contemplate where we are in the view of God. How does the Lord see us? I'm sorry, I'm, teaching, I'm preaching a total different message here, but it might be shorter than the other one. Pray that it is, huh? All right. 
It is the Lord that we, we, he looks at us and we want, Lord, what do you see? What do you see? So I thank, thanks be to God that he looks to us when we've been washing the blood, that he looks to us and he sees us white and clean when we're looking toward him and we want to be champions. When, we are, when, when our mind is stayed on Jesus, when we, are, when we have made up our mind to follow Jesus. It doesn't mean we're perfect, but what it does mean uh, is that the blood is active in your life. And as long as the blood is active in your life, uh, he's going to see the blood. And that blood is going to make you, he's going to see you as white as snow. Though your sins be as scarlet, they're going to be washed and white as snow. Yet you're not perfect, but you're headed that way. You're not doing anything, amen, that, that would just totally contrary against God, but you're fighting the urges. You're doing things, amen. You're withstanding against the enemy. You're in a war for your soul. What does the Lord see? He doesn't see somebody that's just scuffed up, messed up, uh, thrown around the dust, but he sees a warrior, and he sees someone that's victorious, and he sees someone, amen, that's going to make it all the way. So therefore, therefore the reason, the reason that you're not consumed the reason that you're not defeated, the reason that you fall seven times, but you get back up again, is because my God changes not, and he cares, and he loves for you, and he's gonna make sure, amen, that you make it all the way. Clap your hands to the Lord. <coughs> I don't know how to get to my other message anymore, sir. So. Praise the Lord. What? How do you see yourself? Well, we like to see ourselves in the same light, but you know, when you're serving God, you realize that your faults are ever before you. you because they're sinners, that they, they're sinners that they don't see their faults ever before them. They just, they just uh, ignore their faults. You can't ignore your faults. You can't say that's the way God made me. You have to be born again and renewed into his image. You can't blame your state. You can't blame your state on God. Why is that? Because he has given you a remedy. Yeah. Yeah. He's given you a way of escape that you might be able to bear whatsoever you're going through. So the scripture is written that it was the sons of Israel are not consumed. That they somehow continue to exist. Even though Israel, this is something about Israel. Israel doesn't really know anything about the devil, okay? He doesn't know, they don't know much about the devil at all. The only reference to him is perhaps uh, on the contest or, or, or at the, when they bring Job into the conflict. And uh, uh, he is known as Behemoth. He is known as Leviathan. But outside of that, you don't hear of the devil in the Old Testament. Very, very little. You know him as Lucifer, but that refers to a, a brilliant, bright angel that was... That was uh, that was cast down because of it. And that's about it. So, when they, when they went through what they went, they didn't realize that they had to keep God's order because the invisible enemy that hated mankind was constantly trying to destroy them. And yet they would not heed to the Lord. Yet they did what they wanted to do the majority of the time, and, and then they had to repent constantly. I mean, the devil, he hates he hates. Mankind so much that he corrupted them so that the Lord had to bring a flood upon the world. Uh, and then after the world was replenished, 
He brought forth a man by the name of Abraham. And Abraham was the one that was called the faithful. He was, the, he was faithful unto the Lord. He was called the friend of God. He's the father of the faithful. And it was this Abraham that brought forth Isaac. And then Isaac brought forth Jacob. And so this is where Jacob has his sons, and he has 12 tribes. And so the sons of Jacob is all Israel together. And so this is from this time when they become a nation. This is where their faults truly become obvious. As a tribe, as, as the tribes of Israel, what they do? They rejected, uh, they rejected, they wanted a king. And they rejected God as, for being their king. And they wanted a king like all the other nations. So for God gave them kings. Kings with all sorts, of, uh, uh, all sorts of blemishes in their life. Saul failed. David had his failures, but he was ultimately victorious. And then Solomon was another one that failed. Yet, guess what? They, even though they had great failures, yet God did not destroy the nation nor consume them. Right. Nor did he allow the other people, all the other nations to overwhelm them and overpower them, even when they were not in his graces. Think about it for just a moment. How, how the Lord is that he changes not, because he set out. The Lord set out to make man after his image and likeness. He, he, he set out to do it. He made the first man. But that's not what his intentions were. His intentions were to one day put on the flesh himself, come down and walk among men, uh, suffer death for you and I, and then to rise up uh, and, to, and to form many brethren. He had a plan all along. Therefore, God did not consume, allow him to be consumed. He did not allow him to be destroyed because God has a plan and he changes not. Now, with the church... The church was established, you and I. And then, but you and I know about, we have an adversary. We know there is a devil. If you don't believe in a the devil, then you must be Episcopalian at heart or something, you know, because we know the Bible says there is a devil. And in our, in our we're so blessed to know that we have, uh, that there's a devil. We know that there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a Demons, we know there's all these other things, principalities and powers. Uh, so these are not hidden to us. Therefore, you and I, you and I fight the good fight of faith. This is why we pray. This is why we rebuke spirits. This is why we rebuke bad attitudes even in ourselves. Because these are influences that come from outside of us and try to deflate what we do, what we say. It tries to infiltrate our minds and our spirits through media and all these things. And we know this. Maybe you don't know this. But the devil is in this world and he's the one that's in the details. He's in the details. This is why, this is why music is such a powerful force. Man, we, we are able to worship with music. But you notice we're not playing hip-hop. We're not playing rock. You, you notice that it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of music that get, we have, puts a song. doesn't diminish the song that we have in our heart. There's something in it that blesses our lives. It keeps us going forward. And so when you look at these things, uh, you realize, you know, there always is a, a good thing and there's always the bad thing. And there's the bad thing is always trying to infiltrate into our minds, hearts, souls to make us to fall into bondage. And this is why you struggle many times in the house of God. This is why you struggle many times in, uh, in your life because you have not yet put to discernment what God has placed in you. God has given you the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And that Holy Ghost is to lead you and guide you into all truth. We're different than Jacob. We're different than, we're different than uh, Israel. We have something that God has placed in us and you have to put it to use. God changes not. But now he's using a different method for us. 
He is building up a church, somebody that would take the place, that would stand in or be grafted into Israel so that the Gentiles, people that were not worthy, people that have been called dogs, people that have been called uh, filthy, uh, we were considered filth. We couldn't go to a synagogue. We couldn't go to worship God. The, you remember the ten lepers? We talk about the ten lepers that, uh, that uh, came before the Lord. They were cleansed, and then they left. Then one returned back and fell at the feet of Jesus. The Bible said he was a Samaritan. Why did he come back? People said, oh, he just came to work. Well, he had nowhere to go. He couldn't go to the temple. He was, he was half a Jew. He couldn't go there. So that was the beautiful thing was that he went. Somehow he, he understood, well, that I'm already healed, so I'm going back to worship Jesus. Amen. He realized that, that he didn't need a temple of stone. They went out and did their thing over there according to the, the, the time. But that one man, a Samaritan, the beautiful thing about that is that he is made whole because he finds Jesus. How did, he, how did he become whole? He realized who the Lord was. The rest of them really didn't. They still go to the temple. But this one fell down at his feet and worshiped God. Now, we, that's what you need. You need to know your focal point that Jesus has to be everything to me. Yes, you should consider him in everything that you do. Every morning, thank you, Jesus. Thank you that I woke up and that I have the breath of life. Thank you, Jesus, that I still have a good job. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I still have that pain, but God's going to heal me. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to have things. Yes, yet we realize that God changes not and his mercies endure every day. His benefits are renewed every day. And so, we're on the tail end of this church experience. The church is about to be raptured up. The church is about to be raptured. Why? Because we've been praying. We've been praying. Pray that you might be worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. She said, that's the tribulation. Pray that you might be worthy to escape the tribulation and to stand before the Son of Man. It's going to take, amen, it's going to take just simply doing what the Lord requires us to do. Love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, strength, and might, and your neighbor as yourself. On these two hang all the law and the prophets. That means you don't even have to read the whole Old Testament at all, really. If you can do these things through the Holy Ghost, and the only thing you have in the New Testament, that's what you need to do right there. Yes, and as we do that, the Lord is going to prepare you like never before. The Lord is preparing this church right now. How many of you are aware that, that for instance, that Israel was attacked yesterday? How many do you know? If you don't know anything about it, if you don't know anything about it, how many, how many do know? Raise your hand. If you don't know, don't raise your hand. Okay, so, good. Honesty is the best policy <laughs> in church. <laughs> so many of you don't know what's happening. Now, what is happening is that In the book of Revelation, the devil is being, the devil is being uh, exposed. He's being exposed. In the book of Revelation, it tells us this, that he has a vision and he sees a red dragon. And this red dragon appears right when Israel is going to be attacked in the last days. And it says that he's in the heavens. Now, what that is telling you and I right now is that the devil and He's like, a, he's like a dragon, and he is invisibly trying to get the nations to destroy Israel. First of all, all the Arab nations. And listen, it's going to get worse. It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse and worse. But thank be to God, he changes not. And even though this is what's about to happen, can be demoralizing, like October 7th is demoralizing that they could be attacked and then mutilated uh, and then uh, they, them to expect no response from the Jacobs. Yeah. Well, they're in a Jacob state right now. 
Don't think that they are in an enlightened state right now. They don't know who Jesus is. They are in a Jacob state. So therefore, there are people, though, that are champions, there are, are, there are in Israel state. That is the church of God right now. This is why God is getting ready to take us out of the way, because he is going to save that nation. And before he does that, we're seeing a few things already, but you have to turn to God. If you don't know Jesus, if you're not serious with the Lord, perhaps you're visiting today, I offer you Jesus. I want to introduce you to Jesus, that if you... If you want to escape what is about to take place, and we don't have time, I don't have time to cover it. Those, that can be covered in Bible study. But if you, can inst- if you can instill faith that you know something's not right, and the world seems to know that something is not right, uh, then it is you that God is calling to get ready for an event uh, that you can't even fathom is going to take place. And it will take place uh, in the very near future. Would you clap your hands to the Lord? He changes not. He changes not. I'll finish with this. The nation was, listen, the temples were destroyed two times. The Israelites were scattered everywhere. Yet, to this day, they are not consumed. They exist. Could it be? Could it be that the reason, all the stuff, you maybe don't know the Lord, all the stuff that you've been going through, yet, you should have died. You should have not be here. You, look, you still got your mind when you thought you'd go crazy. The reason you have not been consumed is because God is getting ready to transform you into a champion. A champion. He wants to turn you into somebody that has victory. He wants to turn your life around, uh, not to be mediocre, not to barely be making it, but right now is a time for transformation. Right now is a time for that the Lord, amen, renew you and make you and give you a brand new plan. Listen, right now is not a time to step out of your Christianity. Right now is a time to step back into your Christianity. Right now is a time to be blessed by walking back into the will of God. Yes, young people, you're about to get the Holy Ghost. You've been seeking God. Right now is your time. Don't, not right now, not time to back off. But don't you give up. Keep seeking that Holy Ghost. Uh, keep pushing against the crowd. Keep pushing away from worldly things. Do it. Your friends might not do it, but do it. Stand with us. Perhaps. Perhaps you can start to release the Jacob. Lord, I'm tired of being a trickster. I'm tired of being a, I'm tired of being a hypocrite. Lord, I'm tired, of, I'm tired of doing bad stuff to good people. I'm tired, oh God, of, of doing things and shortchanging. I'm tired of it, Lord. I'm tired of being a Jacob. I want to step into my birthright. Perhaps you're just ashamed of the Lord. Perhaps you don't really trust. Listen, if you don't have faith, it's because either you're not, coming, you're not listening enough or you're not reading enough. Because you read that Bible, all you need to do is read about miracles. Read about how Israel is saved through miracles. Read about the miracles in the book of Acts. Read about them. Fortify yourself. Till you you will want to see something like that. Once you start putting your trust in Jesus, all these signs will follow after you. A portion of something's going to happen that you're going to say, oh my goodness. God answered that prayer. That person asked you to pray for them and they told me they were healed. Any one of you can accomplish that. If you will simply have the courage to tell that person, you know what, Uh, could I pray for you? Or could we pray together? 
They, they might be offended. If, but can we pray together over your condition? All that God awaits for is for you to step into your opportunities to tell someone who Jesus really is. Sons of Israel, it's time to stand up. It's time to step out and grow up and get ready for the return of Jesus Christ. And they that have this hope purify themselves even as he is pure. I tell you, if you have the hope of the rapture, you keep pushing, amen. You keep pushing against the darkness. You keep pushing against, yeah. You keep pushing against it. Clap your hands to the Lord. I'd like to open the platform. I feel that God got his part across. I want to open this platform. I want to invite you to come. I want you to be blessed today. I want you to recognize that the devil is about to be exposed like never before. And when you see it in the things that you like and he exposes the enemy, run from it. Keep yourselves from it. Keep yourselves pure in the love of God.